my hero academia just uh got very much intense. Holy crap, what an emotional chapter. Listen, let me just say this. This is chapter of the week. 10 out of 10 chapter. 10 out of 10 chapter here, guys. My God, what a freaking chapter. Like, I didn't even see none of what we got in this chapter coming. And lo and behold, it's crazy. Anyways, let, this is Camp 15. Back out with another My Hero Academia manga chapter review. This is chapter number 317, titled Scars, Blood, and Filth. Now the chapter starts off with, I guess, a cover page of you see Deku, and this guy, Deku. When I mean this guy, Deku, looks exhausted, he looks damn near exhausted. You see the bags in his eyes, and the bags in his eyes are like, this guy needs some sleep. This guy needs some sleep, man. Dude, this Deku, it's funny because this past episode of My Hero in the anime um, had the Christmas episode. You see Deku much more uh, happy and everything. And it's funny because in that episode, Deku made a comment saying like, I hope we can spend more Christmases like this again. And I'm like, as somebody who reads the manga, I know what's happening to Deku right now. And sad that he might not get that type of Christmas again. Anyways, let's continue. So uh, the manga chapter actually starts off with the heroes after escaping the exploded, the mansion explo explosion. Now I will say this, this is probably the only negative thing I have about this chapter because we don't get any understanding how they got out of the blast. They just cut to the, the heroes in a warehouse and we don't get no understanding. Like I figured we would, they would get out of the mansion from exploding, but how do they do it? I don't know if they'll ever go back into doing that. That's why I feel like, well, unless the, when the anime gets to that point, maybe they'll explain how they got up out of that explosion. We'll see. Um, don't know. The only other thing is if they're not going to show in the manga, we're going to have to wait till the anime gets to this arc and animates it or adapts it. And maybe, you know, they put in a filler scene of how Deku and Endeavor and the other heroes get out of the mansion explosion. But essentially all the heroes are A-OK -okay and they're fine. Now, again, like I said, they're chilling in this warehouse and they're talking. Edshot is saying, we may have escaped that explosion by the skin of our teeth but the blast erased any trace of the lead. Um, have we, he goes on to say, have we extracted anything from Nagant? Fox replies by saying, no, it's, since she's in like really bad shape, she's not gonna be able to give us any information. Like the doctors are even shocked that she's still alive at this point and stuff like that. Now, Kamui Wood says, a woman afflicted by powerful despair, still clinging desperately to life. And this is when Edshot comes up with the idea and he tells us, he's like, Endeavor, is it time to stake everything on turning this around? He goes on to say, maybe we should expand this beyond um, us beyond us, and bring in every last remaining hero, informing the others about Midoriya and One for All, and throwing an all-encompassing net at, um, at this investigation. Now, Mount Lady, who's surprisingly still alive, also we see a kind of design change in Mount Lady in the fact that on her face, she has a scar slightly above her eye. Now, Mount Lady goes on to say, that business with Lady Nagant made it clear that the brunt of hunting down the league will be left to Midoriya. Um, the cops are up to their eyeballs with other problems and there have been no, there've been no eyewitness accounts of the league for a while. We should put together a task force before the pool of colleagues we can count on has dried up. Now, hold on a quick second. Um, they explain about a hero who we know, I'm gonna get his legit hero name and I'll be back in a quick second. So see you guys real soon. Okay, back. So I got the official hero name. Now, Endeavor brings up the point, he's like, right. Desuga uh, Goro quit two days ago. In other words, Def Arms, um, which was one of the first heroes we saw when this series showed up. And Endeavor goes on, on to mention about him 
Death Arms essentially quitting to be human. Now we get a flashback to where Death Arms is talking and Death Arms is saying, this job has been running me ragged. I can't seem to catch a break. And what do we get for it? Rant, it rants, um, what is it? But it rants double rage. Yeah, I know there's still some support for us out there, but one loud heckler easily drowns out 10 fans. I've never felt like this before, which he makes a good point. Listen, YouTubers, stuff like that. Um, you know, professionals, you have that one person who reps at you. And at the end of the day, even though you want to ignore it and turn out, you know, at the end of the day, it's still going to eat at you and be like, it hurts you. And it's like, what can I do to be better? Like, I don't like having criticism. I don't like being critiqued. So obviously he got tired of the criticism that the heroes were getting. Death Arms going to say, I thought I was different. Uh, I thought I was better. I'm sure we all did once. And he's doing this, taking his hero costume off one by one by one. And this is when he ends, he's saying, but nah, I'm no hero, I'm only human. So we find out that Death Arms retired from being a pro hero. Again, another hero quitting at this time of need. At the end of the chapter, I'll go and give my full thoughts and stuff like that, but that was a shocker. And again, see heroes just quitting at a time like this in this world of My Hero Academia right now. We'll get into it real soon. Um, they go on, I think Endeavor goes on to say, he, in the big battle, he led the charge up to round up the spy working, uh, the spy heroes working, uh, the, chuck up the spy, the hero that was working for the Paranormal Liberation Front. He seemed like a hero with some backbone to him. Then Best Genus says this, any given hero's thread could snap tomorrow, and it, and it wouldn't come as a shock. We hear about more heroes hanging up their costumes every day. Now, that's when Endeavor goes and say, plus the media's close, closing, are closing in on Deku. Since heroes who do quit end up leaking details, with law and order all gone, or all but gone, power runs unchecked in the streets. So we can't let the world learn about the truth for, uh, behind one for all. If that were up to happen, Deku will be caught, um, will be the one caught in the vicious cycle of negativity, which makes sense. Like try to keep the secret of one for all as hidden as you can because Endeavor makes a good point. Like, if One For All gets out of here, if P if the public knows about One For All, they're gonna be like, wait, so you're telling me this kid is the chosen one? Then why isn't he stopping the bad guys? Then you're gonna have people just rip at Deku away and put more unnecessary stress on him and essentially like rip him when it's nothing to do with Deku to begin with. Deku's doing the best he can. And we know how the civilians in Hero Society, they have been very, and I mean very critical of the heroes. And if this gets out, who knows? Maybe they blame even All, um, All Might. Be like, wait, All Might had this power too? And he passed out to this kid? What? Can All Might do something about this? Eat? So, you know, it, that's why it's like, maybe releasing this for public is not the best at all. No. Now I have a feeling eventually it's gonna come to the point after this whole storyline is out, maybe that quirk will come out to the public and be like, you know what? There we go. And something like that. Now Hawks replies by saying, we consider all day and prophesy Doom, but the fact is Doom's already on our doorstep. This is when Mount Lady comes to a point and she's like, look, I've been thinking, is All For One planning to go public about this? Like, you know, why would he not do that? Why would he not just blurt out to the world, you know, hey, this kid named Izuku Midori has this court named all for named one for all and stuff like that. And Devil replies by saying that would force his heroes to mobilize and lock Deku away somewhere safe. So his silence tells us that he doesn't want that still. And guys, remember, all for one isn't trying to kill Deku. He's trying to run Deku into the ground, take one for all, and then probably kill him if he's that successful. Uh, Endeavor says, unless Deku and the rest of us are out there taking action, we'll never get any leads. There's not enough cops and not enough heroes. So essentially, these are like some of the last remaining heroes other than, I guess, students really who still want to be heroes that 
Well, look at this. That's kind of it. And it's just crazy, man, with how many heroes are just dropping out. Now, we see Endeavor get a text from Shoto saying, like, yo, can you please pick up? I want to talk. You know, he's trying to call him. And obviously, Endeavor's like, not now. I can't do this. You're going to have to wait a little longer, Shoto, and stuff like that. Now, Hawks gets a ring to his phone, and he gets an alert saying from All Might that Deku has taken out the second assassin that went after that, supposed to go after him. And we see a crazy panel where De the, the assassin Deku taken out is already knocked out. He used Blackwood to hold him in place and everything. And it's just crazy. And they pan over to Deku's arm. This man looks, Deku looks incensed. I'm like, this dude Deku ain't playing no more. So that's when he jumps out. Um, Deku tells All Might, like, this one didn't have any intel. Be careful, he might explode. So it seems like this guy, this villain, this assassin had an, uh, had a explosion quirk. And Deku still beat him. Now, All Might's calling for him, saying, like, yo, wait a second, man. He's like, look, you haven't been eating. Here, have this. And then that's when Deku's like, All Might, you don't have to follow me anymore. And he's like, and at the same time, Deku's remembering the thing at the last chapter when all for one is like now it's your turn that i'm coming after you or my eyes are focused on you so he deku's telling all oh my look i'm fine you don't have to look after me i'm gonna go on my own and he even says in this chapter like i'm essentially on par with what you can do what you did in your prime at 100 power and i take no recoil damage now he could be making a reference to the fact of him doing the pseudo 100% or the Fox 100% um, one for all with that and Fa Jin, or maybe he's just giving a bluff to All Might. I feel like it's morally, he's morally talking about his pseudo 100% um, one for all power where he can essentially, you know, build up enough energy to give a 100% blast. So. I'm guessing that's what he's talking about. Other than that, that, I don't know what he means by that. Otherwise, he's, I guess, trying to reassure All Might, saying, like, look, you don't have to worry about me. And in the meantime, you get this panel where you have all these shots. You have the one season four moment when um, Deku talks to All Might as he's jogging, and All Might tells him how Night Eye told him that he's going to have a unspeakably gruesome death if he continues to be a hero like this and stuff like that. Um, you get the most minutes you get you 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 have all my just flashing back and stuff like that to his meetings with Deku in that one little classroom you know you get them you see a flashback in the moment when back in season two um are near the sports the sports festival arc when all my tells him like go show the world that you are here and stuff like that and it's just crazy and very emotional and everything here and stuff like that and all Might in his head is monologuing, you're dead set on keeping me out of harm's way. And you have your duty as a wielder of one for all. You don't look back at me anymore. Which is so freaking sad because we know Deku, this is Deku's aisle. He always looked up to All Might, even when things got rough um, and stuff like that. He always looked up to All Might for advice and teachings and stuff like that. Now, he's like, Deku's now like walking away from all this. He's like, I'm done. You know, I... I don't need you right now, and stuff like that. And Deku just turns his head and he tells him, don't worry about me, really. All Might's monologue, and as he's trying to reach out for Deku, he's like, I swore I'd raise you up and protect you, but I know how it is. You're the only one who can bear this burden, and I know how crushing it is. Do your best, you deserve to rest. I need to tell you that. You get this crazy, this amazing, emotional ass panel where you have Deku just jumping away. You see his glove and then you see All Might's hand trying to reach out to him to stop him and be like, come back, you know, and stuff like that. He falls over, the bento box falls over, it's on the ground. And in the shadows, we see Stain who listened on. Yes, hero, hero killer Stain in on this whole situation, this whole conversation. Now we get a flashback to where we see the public talking about Deku. And the public says this, they say he appears without a sound and that he's got a whole mess of quirks in him. That sounds like all for one's ability, right? Or a Nomu. But apparently he goes around helping people 
The rumor says says he's caked with blood and filth, which cover up his many scars. And the last page on the chapter has a panel of Deku looking insanely crazy. And this comment literally says, from this one person saying, looking at him, you guessed he never was a hero. One, we don't get a break from My Hero Academia next week. So that's crazy. Um, I'm still shocked that we have not got one break. So Horikoshi is giving us these chapters, man. And again, from the way Deku looks in this one panel, man, he looks like a monster. He also looks villain-like. Now, I think the reason why he looks like that is because of interpretation of how the civilians are, you know, I guess you can say having him look like that, unless that's really what he's looking like right now. Like to the to the civilians, he looks like someone like a monster, someone like a villain type of character. Because, hey, you know, that's what he looks like from afar. But, you know, it's crazy, man. The de It's just crazy that now Deku's taking no advice from All Might telling him to slow down and everything. And I feel like this is why, you know, I feel like this is going to be Deku's little downfall in terms of, one, if we're not getting death flags for All Might, all Might, I think, is going to be dying sooner rather than later. And it's going to be... I feel like Horikoshi's doing the whole Spider-Man coming of age, you know, origin story where Spider-Man does... where Peter does his own thing and, you know, he becomes selfish. He He's off doing his own thing because he believes he can do all this and he's being selfish about this. And his mentor, fatherly figure, Uncle Ben, died because of a mistake he made of passing something up, of passing the killer who killed Uncle Ben up and just let him go free. Here, Deku walking away from All Might without taking the advice from All Might just to rest for a bit, eat some food. You know, I understand you're going through all this stress and everything and I know you want to stop, but you're seeing Deku is falling into all for one's trap, being fueled by his rage and his anger of trying to stop him at all costs. He's not even listening to somebody he respected from the first chapter. Somebody he's looked up to. He's not even, he, he's not even just doing anything to listen to him. Deku is too consumed by his rage and his anger to try to stop all for one where he's not listening to people. You know, we saw in the last chapter when they got to the mansion, he wasn't even listening to Endeavor. He just walked up in there trying to say, okay, I need to stop all for one right now, right here, right now. We need to find these guys, you know? And I think what they're doing is they're doing, I think what Horikoshi is, Horikoshi is doing, he's doing this, the Spider-Man origin story with Deku. Um, in other words, what I'm saying is, Deku's gonna have that coming of age story, his realization moment. Somebody, more than likely, it's gonna be All Might, you know? Deku is just not taking All Might's advice. And what's gonna happen is All Might might die when Deku doesn't see it or least expect it. And then lo and behold, the hero, somebody's gonna get in contact with Deku and they're gonna be like, kid, we need to stop for now. And he's gonna be like, I need to find all for one. I need to find Shigaraki. And that's when one of the heroes, maybe Endeavor or Hawks tells him like, dude, kid, seriously, I think you need to know this. All Might died. And then that might, and if that's the case, either two things are happening. Deku is going to be broken because of this. And that's when he's gonna start blaming himself. And then that's when we're gonna obviously maybe see, maybe Class 1A come in and try to get him together and stuff like that. Um, or he's gonna use this as more rage, more anger, which makes him do something stupid to where he almost gets one for all taken from him or, you know, maybe even worse, killed, you know? And that's when he's gonna have that moment where he's gonna be like, I can't rush in alone, you know? and stuff like that. And remember, the vestige of All Might in the vestige world is still like a fiery flame. So maybe if he has an interact, goes back to the vestige world, you know, maybe it's like he sees All Might in the vestige world and he's like, what are you doing here? And then that's when All Might can be like, I'm sorry, kid, but I died. That's why I'm here now. Um, and it's just very freaking insane, very freaking crazy with this chapter, man. So and that's the Deku side of things. 
Now, the Stain thing. Now, we know that All Might was supposed to talk to Stain. We don't know what he wanted to talk to Stain about, but we see Stain is there. So we could see Stain talking to All Might. We don't know what Stain will do. Will Stain kill All Might or will he go after Deku? Very interesting. But the crazy thing is, Stain's ideology about what being a true hero is about, he's really hitting the nail on the spot, nail on the head. Because, my God, he was absolutely right. When the going gets tough for these heroes, they just back out, they quit, and they hang up their capes. Um, yeah. They just hang, they just hang, they hang it all up and everything. And it's, and you look at it, it's like, why would the heroes just back out now? Like Death Arms, you know? You think Death Arms is a true hero. We didn't see much of him, but we figured like, oh, that guy looks like a hero that will stick through to the very end. And we see in the same chapter, he quits. And you just see it and it's like, Dude, these heroes, these professionals, these adults are quitting their jobs, their professions in a time of need when they need to do their jobs and instill some sort of hope to the public. But because the public is ripping them and they can't handle criticism, they can't handle and be like, you know what? I know they're critiquing me, but at the end of the day, I have to do my job. I have to find some way to get them back on my side. And we have to stop these villains. One by one, they're dropping out. And it's going to show you, and it's crazy to say, Def Arms, he's not a true hero. Because a true hero is like what Endeavor, Hawks, Mount Lady, Kamui Woods, Edshot, what they're doing, they're still doing hero work because they know this is, there's barely any cops, there's barely any heroes. We can't do it. We, we have to do the best we can to stop all this. And it's crazy to see this, man. It's gotten to the point where there's damn near no heroes left. Like now it's getting to the point where, like I said, like, bro, there might actually have to tell these kids, like, dude, you guys have to go on the field, man. Cause there's nobody left. And it just goes to show you, man. Who were the real heroes and who were not? The real heroes would stay and be like, you know what? I know these guys are, I know this public is giving me criticism, but I'm gonna still do my job the best I can, you know? And it's like it never says, like they can't really, like these guys can't really get no sleep, no rest, because guess what? There's no other heroes covering for them. They're in a time of uncertainty where it's getting to the point where it's utter chaos on the streets. It's just really bad, man. And I'm just very, and, and, and you know, you see all these heroes and you just be like, man, I would not, and like, if I was in the My Hero Academia world right now, I'd be like, I'm not mad at Endeavor and the other heroes who are continuously doing the work. I'm mad at the heroes who are just randomly quitting, just giving up because this one war affected them so, their psyche so much that it's like, yeah, I can't handle this. And it's crazy to believe like Mount Lady, we all think Mount Lady is like, we all thought at the start, oh, Mount Lady's gonna be that type of hero that uh, only does it for fame and popularity because she's cute, she's hot, she's sexy. And she's the truest hero out there. My respect for Mount Lady grew even tenfold after this. I'm like, in an age where all these heroes are just quitting and she's still a hero? Props to her, man. Like, you would least expect Mount Lady to still be a hero during this time. You know, if you had told me, told me like Def Arms, Kamui, Woods, and Mount Lady, which one would be, which out of those three would be ones that quit being a hero? You would probably think Mount Lady would just quit being a hero and just be like, you know what, I'm gonna do a modeling career. No, she's still there. She's still there. I had my respect to Mount Lady when she was taking on Gigantomachia, but my respect even grew for Mount Lady even more than this. It's grew a lot more for all those heroes that are still there, man. It's gonna be very interesting to see where this chapter, where this this manga goes, man. Very interesting. But other than that, guys, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's chapter 
of My Hero Academia and put in the comment section, what are your thoughts about this? What are your thoughts with the heroes? What do you think Stain's gonna do? Again, hit that subscribe button if you wanna get more My Hero Academia, manga chapter reviews, or even anime um, reviews. I think what I'm also gonna do is I'm probably gonna record a video tonight and record a video and then upload it tomorrow because speaking about the whole fact that it seems like that the anime is skipping over the My Villain Academia arc and they're gonna do the Endeavor Agency arc first. And I'll probably make a video going into more detail why I think Studio Bones is doing that decision. But other than that, guys, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Till then, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.